or this is like the reoccurring chorus of my life, you are going to die, okay? So this is my encouraging sermon for you this morning. You are going to die. There's no way you're gonna avoid it unless Jesus comes back before you die, you are going to die, okay? So that's settled. <laughs> so I knew that to find the meaning in my life, I had to deal with God that there was no purpose, there was no meaning, there was no ultimate fulfillment for me outside of God. So I said, I gotta figure him out. Who is God? What is God? I was like, I don't, what is this invisible being that we're all talking to as if we could see him? I remember the arguments I had with him as a, as a kid. If you want me so bad, just show up. I've got eyes, I know you can do it, you did it in, I would read the book of Exodus and I would, I would be like, you did it for Moses. <laughs> you know, they're kind of arrogant. It's a good thing that God just tolerates my arguments, right? <laughs> the good thing about God is he is not intimidated by us. He's not hurt or intimidated by our questions. If you're in this room, maybe you're a young person and you have your own secret doubts that you haven't even vocalized. I'm not suggesting you go vocalize them, but vocalize them to God because he will give you answers, but you have to ask the questions, let him answer. He is not intimidated by your unbelief and he's not intimidated by your questions. So I begin to ask, what are you? Who are you? Where are you? Why are you? <laughs> and why am I? I had to know the why behind the what. I'm a why girl. I loved philosophy, I loved all that kind of stuff. I need to know the purpose and I need to know the why. So I got really caught up into the story of God. I started with, what are you? What are you, God? In the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter one, he says he saw a vision of God and he sees this huge whirlwind, right? So this is how I picture God, the being of God. He sees the, this whirlwind that just goes on and on and on. I picture God, you know, God the Father, God the Spirit, as that whirlwind that just goes on and on and there's no edge. Like it says in the book of Psalms, if you go to the depths of hell, even there he will find you. There's no way out of God. The only way to not be with God is to close your heart out. Like I think of humans as kind of like, empty capsules in the ocean of God. And the, we become one with him when we open up our hearts to him. And the only place he isn't is in the closed heart. So he's that whirlwind that goes on and on and on and on and on. But at the center, in the heart, in the bosom, what Ezekiel saw was a throne. And he saw one who sat on a throne like a man. Now this was in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, Ezekiel the prophet sees the vision of God. He sees this whirlwind and he looks a little closer and in the core, in the heart, in the bosom of the Father is a man, a man. This was mind boggling for the Jewish people. They, were, they wouldn't even speak of it. For many, many centuries, they couldn't even read Ezekiel one because they couldn't figure out what it meant. So God the Father, this whirlwind, which, I, which, which, you know, in worship, by faith, we go to that place, that heavenly throne scene, that revelation for the bosom of, of his heart. By faith, we are there. We are with Christ, seated in that place. We are there even now, surrounded by that whirlwind of his presence within us and the whirlwind of his presence all around us. 